go here, Nathaniel says we're about to load into Whirlwind. This is going to be an exciting one. Whirlwind's a nice big four-player map. What do you think about this four-player map for these two players? I think it kind of forces that macro game, and I have to give the edge to life. But we're here, and we have this Terran player who's got to bring things back a little bit more from the Terran versus Zerg. We've seen him play earlier from Team Acer. It is innovation. He said he made those aggressive plays because he wasn't mm. confident, but this guy is super confident in the Southeast. The blue Zerg player. What's tearing to this guy? It is life. Life is one of two players remaining in the tournament that has not lost a single series yet. Life and Tasia are the only two players to do that so far, Nathanius. Innovation has looked a little bit vulnerable. In group stage three, or should I say group C, he lost two games. And there went what, two wins and two losses. And he narrowly beat Jadong. So he overall, three wins and two losses. But Life, on the other hand, he won four games out of four games in group stage. And then, of course, he went on to beat Naniwa. So 5-0 overall compared to three wins and two losses. Quite a dominant performance from the Startail player. Yeah, he's, he's had a great tournament uh, every possible way that you can really look at it. And we're even seeing him opening up with a Reaper on Whirlwind. And this is a bit unusual. You don't typically see this because Reapers are fast, sure, but the ability to scout is somewhat limited since there's not a lot of space to go from the main into the natural and vice versa. Um, and it's kind of like the map's so big, it's hard to deal damage. Most players try to play economically. Maybe Innovation uh, has something up his sleeve for a faster transition after the Reaper or he's worried about life maybe bringing some type of aggression. Well, oh dearie me, that seems to be another drone moving out and I think we're gonna be seeing a third hatchery come down. And well, if anybody can remember what happened to Jadong earlier today. Yeah. The same build against a Reaper expansion. He ended up losing like 10 drones really early on. This is clearly a threat to life and could go heavily in favor of Innovation to start this series up. He's even taking the Extractor before the spawning pool. It's very important that Innovation finds where life is sooner than later. His SCV scouts the northwest position. He'll know he's not there. The best bet he can really do is send this Reaper to the southeast, and that's where it's rallied. It might actually run past this hatchery on its way over to that base. The spawning pool is coming in. The Overlord actually doesn't see this coming in yet either. So there's some potential for this to do some damage. The Overlord position by the third hatchery might barely see the Reaper. He does see it. He's aware that it's coming. And how does he respond? All he has are drones. Yes, yeah, it's not good, is it? And this Reaper is just going to cause havoc inside this main base. Let's see how many uh, drones he's going to be able to pick up. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a substantial amount. Yeah, he's got the factory, the command center on behind this. Now it's time to do something with what he has now. Two drones softened up a little bit. He's trying to pull Dance around with him. He hasn't lost anything just yet, but he's got a little bit longer to stay here if he wants to hold this back. One drone looks like he'll finally pick one off. He does get that initial kill looking for a second. There's a couple of drones that have already been softened up a lot. One more hit away for just a few of these drones. He still only has that single kill, and if life can hold on a little bit longer, uh, he might be able to pull this back, but there another drone falls. A third drone picked off. This is the strength of this Reaper when you don't have the Zerglings out that fast, but Six. not quite as much damage as he did versus Jadon in that right. earlier 16 series. 16 to 20. Not quite the big difference that we saw previously. And now with Zerglings out and Queen's about to join out too, I think this was quite as successful as it was previously as you described. So Innovation not going to get an easy lead, a big lead, a big easy lead like he did against Jadong. But he is going to follow this up with Hellions. He has a tech lab on the barracks and a starport right next to it. So it looks like he is going to go over with this Reaper, the Hellions and Banshees together. There's definitely opportunities to grab more drone kills. I really like this look from Innovation. He's kind of turning up the heat a little bit more and playing with a lot of Hellions at the start of the game is not necessarily bad versus life. He's a player that oftentimes will utilize not only good Zergling micro, but if you counteract that micro, he's not so likely to move into Roach-based play, which yeah. means that if Innovation can get just a couple of good shots, play very well with the Hellion control, he could, as you said, try to extend some sort of early lead after just that initial three drone kill. We'll find out how much damage these Hellions and Banshees are going to do. They don't necessarily need to get just drones. It can be Queens as well, especially because the Banshee is going to be able to deal out a lot of damage. The Hellions can soften up the Queens. The Banshees can come in for the kill steal. 
And that yeah. should be the combination that Innovation would like to be looking for. He's actually going to be able to do it. He's got more Hellions queued up. It looks like he wants to put the Barracks onto this Tech Lab after the Banshee comes out. So no, nothing like uh, Cloak. The Zerglings chasing the Lone Reaper that Innovation has on the map all the way back. The Hellions coming in just in time to save it. Nary 10 hit points. The Overlord will come in and scout this, though. He sees, okay, you're moving the Barracks back onto the Tech Lab. Starting up your stem. No big production just yet. In life, he's starting to crank out a few more Zerglings. He really wants to hold onto this third base. And it's kind of funny that based on the scouting, life has expanded towards innovation. Dropping this third is going to be absurdly easy uh, in the later phase. But what can he do with these Hellions? 20 Zerglings in production. Innovation just going to try to make this work with these six Hellions. Yeah, six Hellions. Just a single Banshee here. Zerglings aren't going to do too much off creep. Banshee's headed towards the main base. Hellions around on the natural. And this Banshee has found the Queen, but the Queen got a couple of shots off first. So it's not going to be able to kill it. My uh, queen is getting dangerously low. Innovation bringing the pressure. Will lose one Hellion. That Banshee really wasn't able to do too much, though. Still no kills on it. And Innovation's pressing into that third base. The Zergling's getting a wrap around at least one of these Hellions to get picked off. The Banshee helps finish off that queen. And now Innovation, he's, I mean, he's still doing some damage. He's, he's got his setup back at home. He's added on the third command center. Some of these trees, he's... You know, only you can prevent forest fires. Innovation doesn't apparently didn't get that memo. He's coming into the third base, though. The Zerglings are not in position just yet. And he's actually got a pretty low Zergling count. This prevents life from doing anything like going for counter harass. And now that he's finally cleaning up a lot of these Hellions, a little bit of a juke move keeps Innovation alive. But there we see that control preventing Innovation from keeping any type of map control on this field. So far, life has handled all this aggression rather well. 53 drones to 45 SCVs, but behind this innovation's had a very strong setup when it comes to his build. He's got the extra barracks coming down, he's got the double engineering bay, and there is one thing that I always like to see, when I'm a Zoom player at least, I like to see upgrades, I love my own upgrades, but the thing that's missing in this game is evolution chambers, and without evolution chambers, with 1-1 one, one already being made, what I think we may see here is the Bailiness come down, which it is now just coming into the production tab, Roach speed being researched as that layer finishes. Bailing speed being researched when the bailing nest finishes. Ventral sacks. I didn't expect that one. I wasn't going to say that. I could have. I could have sounded really smart, but I didn't. And I'll be honest. I didn't expect that. Uh, we're going to see a bigger set of attacks here from life against innovation. I like this a lot. And it's it it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Innovation's production setup is actually pretty solid for this 10 minute mark. Some of the barracks still producing their own add-ons, but. Dealing with this attack is going to be difficult. He doesn't actually have a supply depot watching the right side of his base just yet. These medevacs can kind of see something happening. But I like that. Life has started his ventral sacks well ahead of the pneumatized carapace, mm -hmm. well ahead of the overlord speed. This means since the speed research is a bit faster than the drop, he won't give away super early on that he's going for this play. Innovation needs to spot this. It's very important oh, for his game. He canceled it. Okay. Okay, he's, okay, cancelling it. May have been just a simple mistake there, but Zerglings do get into the third base here. I'm going to pick up a couple of mules, a couple of SCVs, but the threat, the all-in, and it is an all-in, with 1-1 one, one completing, an army on the way, if he doesn't kill Innovation, we'll see both upgrades got a 2-2 for Innovation. They'll have way too strong of an army, and these Zerglings are slowing down Innovation a lot there. They're bringing SCVs off the mirror line. He's not getting the best income he can get. He's not increasing his army size quite as much as he would have because he is losing money, but the attack is on its way. Innovation sees his roaches, and that's a lot of roaches for this part of the game. He picks up and is going to drop. That will distract life from his main goal, which we all know is to try to kill Innovation here. Is this going to work? He needs a lot of bunkers. He currently has none queuing up too. I think at this point, Ooh. it would have against this style of attack, even five, six bunkers, as long as you don't die to this. Like you said, the upgrade disadvantage is going to be monstrous. Innovation has his 2-2 on the way. There's a Spire coming in, but what exactly can he do with this? If he doesn't kill Innovation, the bunkers are only halfway done, just three of them. He's got the Supply Depot wall in front as well, but the SCV's being transferred away, getting gobbled up by these Roaches. None of them are going to be able to actually make it back from that third base, it seems. All right, well, he hasn't killed Innovation yet. He's still alive. He's on two bases, but here comes the big Bangling ball. 15, 17 Bangling right outside the main base, or right outside, should I say, of the natural of Innovation. Is life going to be able to do this? Three bunkers loaded up, double, triple, Widow Mines ready to go. 
Here we go. Will life be able to break this? He's got a lot of roaches pressing through the supply depots, getting blown apart. The SMEs coming to repair the bane link count, getting lower and lower. Still, the three bunkers are alive. He needs to keep SMEs on top, repairing these. Looks like all three of them actually dropping below half health. He's managing to break through the defenses of innovation. Just a few more banelings are target fired, and he's pressing life back. He needs the banelings on the Marines, and he does not get those connections. Life is dying. Pretty, uh, Innovation's dying hard. He gets the drop into the third base as well, doing some damage back to life. And he's managed to hold this off, but he lost a lot of SCVs. He's killed 11 drones so far this game at the exchange of 30 of his own workers. Mutalisks, they don't matter in this game. Maybe they can get into the mineral lines, but it doesn't matter. With 2-2 two, two about to complete from Innovation, there are no upgrades for Startail Life. Innovation has a major advantage I'd like to look at in this game. If he can use that advantage, if he can get over there, start trading units, that's where Innovation's key to success will be. There is a widow mine there to protect that mineral line, even though there are two bailings up there to uh, try to get towards that mineral line, towards that SCV line. But let's have a look now. Let's have a look. As Innovation prepares his units, he's got all of them ready. Two tools about to complete. This is where we should start to see him move out. The widow mine. Oh, nice nice one move there by Life, actually. He does bring one of them back. Uh, Very nice catch. <laughs> the Widow Mine actually helps finish off some of those units, but now the Mutas are starting to come out of the field. He's inside the main base of Innovation. The missile turrets weren't there in time. The Marines are coming up to try to deny this. And with what few Mutas Life has, he's trying to take this game, at least even things out a little bit from that upgrade discrepancy by hurting the economy. I mean, Still important hope there's no evolution chambers, though. Exactly. So where is he even it up? Is he just trying to overwhelm his opponent with banelings and just look for one big boom? Is that what he's really looking for here? Because without upgrades, he's never going to be able to take good fights unless he just simply has 100,000 more units than innovation. And look at the supply difference. That's not really the case here. Mules are going to get picked off. They don't have any upgrades either. And only units are being made from life. And soon we're going to see innovation start to make his push. And I feel that this push is... It is almost unstoppable with so many Widow Mines. I don't really care how many bangers you have and how weak apparently Widow Mines are nowadays. They're going to do damage and they will. Watch this. This is going to be, I think, it really well and will work out well for innovation. This could be a bloodbath. The Widow Mines getting into position. The Banelings, the Banelings detonating on a lot of the mines. There's still some Marines, though. And all but one Baneling has been eliminated. The tanks is going to help first the but he streams in with Zergling counterattack into the main base of innovation. He's forcing him around. And this is a great play saying, okay, maybe I'll lose my third base, but if I can deal enough damage, shut down your production, I can hold you off. These Marines are coming out, though, with that 2-2 upgrade advance. And he said, if he can get some of them together, rally his forces, he's then he can do it. He's losing his production. He's losing his army capabilities here look at the supply differences you know the upgrades are great but if he's not able to build any units this upgrades won't do too much for well for the non-existent army all he really has is his third base bunkered up and life has somehow once again found a way to take a lead in the game where it seemed like he was